Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? It is currently 2.17 a.m. on this beautiful Saturday evening going into Sunday. It is currently 64 degrees outside. It feels a bit like fall outside tonight. Which is funny because Tanya and I, I think I talked about this yesterday, but Tanya and I were talking about how, well, she brought it up. She was like, you know what's going to happen? She said the pools are going to close and then summer's going to hit in Indiana, which is kind of always the case. We can have some really, really warm days in Indiana in September, like in the 90s, beautiful sunshine, warm. Um, so that'll probably happen and then the pools will be closed. <laughs> Oh well, I had a pool day today, so um, it wasn't sunny, but it was a, we had a good pool day today anyway. I'll talk about that in just a second. Um, yeah, so well, I guess I can talk about that right now. So I got done vlogging earlier today. I vlogged today, right? Yeah, and then I came home, and Alex had gotten up, but then he had gone back to sleep. And he was like, I never get to sleep in. I was like, babe, sleep in as much as you want. So I sat out on the front porch and I um, did, I drank my coffee and I did my meditations and stuff this morning on the front porch. It was beautiful this morning. And um, I mean, it was cloudy, but it was just like a beautiful day. And um, there was a slight breeze and it just was really, really nice. And so then when I was done with all of that, I went inside and I said, well, I said, what are you gonna do now? Cause he was like getting up and moving around and he was like, I'm gonna go to the pool. Cause he hasn't really got to go to the pool much this summer. So he was getting his bag together and stuff. And I was waiting for something to get done. What was I waiting for something to get done? I can't remember. I think I was waiting for the vlog to get done rendering so I could start uploading it. And I said, well, I'll be up there in just a second. Um, I said, I'll probably be up there like in a half an hour. And he was like, okay. So he walked up to the pool and he said there was like really nobody up there. When I got up there, there was just a dad and his two sons and then they left like right after we got there. And then um, uh, this woman and her mom and her son came up there, which we knew from last summer, but I'll talk about that in a second. So anyway, um, <laughs> I have to tell you what was so funny is I was leaving to go to the pool and I had my pool bag and everything, right? And so I was walking out and my neighbors across the street, I said to the woman, I said, this this is not my neighbors next to me, this is my neighbors across the street, the ones that have been wanting this patio, this all seasons room. And I said, and I hadn't talked to her and they voted on it on Wednesday, I guess, and she found out on Thursday or Friday, I don't know. But anyway, I said, how are you doing today? And she was like, I'm doing great. <laughs> I said, you are. And she was like, I have news. And I was like, oh my God, what is your news? And she was like, well, I was gonna go over to the guy. So there's nine people on the HOA board. And so they all vote on anything that happens in the homeowners association. But on her patio, it's not really voting on her patio, I guess. It's voting on the changing in the bylaws to allow structures where there's already something pre-existing. So for example, if you had a patio, you could put in an, an enclosure on there. For us, we have the deck. So like we could remove the deck and put in a patio enclosure right there. Um, if it's in the same like square footage and stuff. So that's all the bylaws is changing it to. And the reason she wanted it changed is because they have this concrete patio that had like bushes around it and she doesn't want that. She wants <clears throat> her all seasons room. So I had told her, cause she's like, I I'm just really worried. He's not this, this, the ninth vote had not been showing up to the meetings for like the last five times. They have like one a month. So this was the sixth month that he, they hadn't like completed the vote on it or something like that. And it was four to four. And so they needed his vote to break the tie. And she was really worried that they weren't going to vote in her favor. He wasn't going to vote in her favor. And I didn't think he was going to vote in her favor either. I was kind of surprised it was four to four. I thought it would be like nine to zero because they don't like to make any changes in the neighborhood. So I had suggested to her, she, she was like, I don't know what to do. Blah, blah, blah. This was like last weekend. I said something, um, my mirror is so dirty. I said to her, I said, um, my Diet Coke, cheers. 
I was just watching a drag pageant and I drank a LaCroix, coconut LaCroix. Anyway, I said, you should take some cookies over to him or something, you know? And say, can I just talk to you a little bit about why this is important to me? And she's like, that's a really good idea. She was like, but I don't really have any time to make cookies and I should have been baking today. And she'll give me all these excuses for why she couldn't do it. I said, well, just go buy him some cookies, you know, and take him over there, sweet roll or something, you know? And just sweeten him up <laughs> to talk to him about why this room is important to you, you know? Just go to him in person. I'm a big believer in that anyway. So she was like, well, that's a really good idea. I think I'm going to do something like that. So today she goes, well, I didn't take him anything over there. She goes, I was going to take him a couple of my, um, I grow my dad's corn. And, like, he's got really famous corn here in Indiana. She was like, so I was going to take him some of this corn. Which is kind of funny because, like, in Indiana, like, that's, like, a big deal. <laughs> like, if somebody brings you, like, homegrown corn or tomatoes, like, that's a big deal. That means they like you. And, um, I don't know if it's like that other places, but <clears throat> a lot of people here grow their own produce or have gardens or they'll have, a, you know, a lot of farmers and whatever, um, will, like, <clears throat> bring stuff to, like, gatherings that's important to them, right? So it's kind of an honor. So she was going to bring this corn to him, but she said she didn't have time to get it or something. So she said she just walked down to his house and she was like, when he was leaving, or she goes, when I got there, she goes, there was a car backing out. So she was like waving him down and running after the car. And like the guy pulled over and rolled down his window. And she said, are you so-and-so? And he said, no, I'm the Uber driver. And so the guy in the back seat was like, well, I'm so-and-so. And she was like, okay, well, I wanted to talk to you about this room enclosure and I know you're going to vote on it. And he was like, well, I'm going out of town. And she's like, you're going out of town. She was like, are you going to be able to, are you going to vote on it this time? And he was like, yeah, I'm going to call in and vote or zoom in or something and vote. And he's like, but I'm really in a hurry right now. Like, this is how bad she wants her home enclosure. Okay. Her room enclosure. She's like, um, okay, but can I call you later? And he's like, yeah, when I get settled, you know, you can call me later. So she talked to him the next day and apparently he did have some questions for her. And so she answered these questions and whatever. And then he voted in favor of her. I couldn't believe it. So she's so excited. She's getting her room enclosure. But let me just tell you. So <clears throat> I said to her, so I was, okay, so then, so that was, her husband came out after that, so we were talking about the room, and, um, I had no idea, like, what a room enclosure would cost, and I wasn't about to ask, because I thought that was rude, right? And so, we were sitting there talking, and, and he said, the problem is the price has really gone up a lot since we first got our estimate, and I said, oh, no, because I said, now everybody's going to want them. And she goes, well, they're pretty expensive now. And I said, oh, really? And he said, yeah, like, the price has gone up, like, astronomically since we got our estimate. And he said it's because there's shortages of stuff and they can't get to the jobs and whatever. And I said, oh, wow, like, I can't even imagine... And, and I kind of, like, threw something out. Like, it's probably, like, so much more now than it was then or whatever. And he looked at me and he goes, oh, that's, like, it's, like, so much more. I, I could, I almost couldn't believe it. It was, like, the price of a nice car, okay? It, since, I mean, it was, like, that doubled. So, I mean, I don't know what a new room enclosure would cost. 50, 60, something thousand, 70,000. I mean, I can't even imagine for like a, I mean, I'm sure it'd be nice to have an all room enclosure, but I just was like, oh my God, like I couldn't, I didn't really have any idea it costs that much. So anyway, so that we were talking about that, she was real excited, but now they can't get it until November or something. Apparently they bring it here and they just kind of like install it in over like a couple days or something. I didn't really understand it. I thought that they would like actually build on an extension, but I guess it's not that. I guess it's like... I don't know. I don't really know what it is, honestly. So, anyway. So, we were talking and he said... 
something about it being kind of cloudy at the pool or what are you going to do at the pool or something. I said, well, I brought a couple books with me to read. Um, I had brought with me that Scott Heim book that I have. I, I was started it earlier this summer and really haven't got into it all. And then I brought the Joan Didion book, uh, Slouching Towards Bethlehem. And then I brought this recovery book called Sober and Out. And it's basically just all these stories of people that are sober, but they're also like part of the LGBTQIA plus community. And um, so I get these books of like collected stories. And um, so anyway, but I it was, who is honking at who over there? Is that the person turning? What is going on? That was the weirdest thing. Anyway, um, so I said to her, I said, I, or I said, do you guys read? And he said, I very rarely read. He goes, but I just read a really good book. And she goes, I read, I like, he goes, she likes thrillers. And I go, oh, I love thrillers too. I read a lot of thrillers. And, um, he goes, well, if you like thrillers, I just read a book that I literally could not stop reading and I had to go to bed or I would have finished it in one setting. And he goes, I got it from Costco. And he goes, do you want it? And I, and I don't like to tell people no, but like whenever people give me books, I never end up reading them. And then I always feel bad and whatever, you know? So, and plus other people, what they think is like fantastic is typically like not like <laughs> what I love. And, um, oh, well, they had already asked me about, I can't remember who it is, some author that writes thrillers, and he writes, like, espionage thrillers. And so I thought, like, that would be what they were into, like, uh, government espionage thrillers, because they were kind of, like, throwing out, like, these different book names and stuff. And I'm totally not into that at all, like the Jason Bourne series and stuff like that. So I was like, oh, I said, yeah, sure, bring it out here. Let me see what it is. He brings it out, and it's Falling by T.J. Newman, which is my book for the book club this month. I could not believe it. I got laughing so hard, and I told him. He goes, this book is so good. And I said, well, I'm really wanting to read it, but I'm afraid, like, we're getting ready to go to Vegas and blah, blah, blah. And he goes, oh, no. He was like, you can totally read it. It won't bother you as far as that. And I said, are you sure? He was like, oh, yeah. He was like, it's really not so much about the nervousness of the plane, which I'm sure is probably not true. He said, it's really kind of like the other story going on. And I said, okay. So, so then he, he said, so you don't want the book? And I said, well, I have a copy inside, but thank you. And he goes, I don't know who to give it to. He said, it's so good though. Um, so I thought that was so funny that he and I kind of like the same things. So then he goes inside, He's he said something about, he had to go do something. So he walked back inside and, oh no, he came over and told me a story. He was telling me a story about something to do with his family. And, um, and then he was like, well, I'll let you get to the pool. And then I was like walking around to my driver's side and he like followed me right up to the driver's side of my door. And then he like walked back across. He goes, I'll let you get up to the pool so you can get up there with Alex. Cause they saw Alex leave. They said hi to Alex or something when he walked up to the pool. So, um, so then I forgot. Oh, I couldn't find my phone. I got in the car and I was like, where is my phone? I could not find my phone. So I went in and I went out and I went in and I went out and, um, finally I found my phone. I can't even remember where I put it. it just like, I think it was just sitting in the kitchen, like on the counter or something. And, um, I've done that like a lot the last two days. Like I can't remember where stuff is. Like I just came out without the camera and whatever tonight. So anyway, I came back out and she was like out closer to the mailbox watering her plants and stuff. She's like all these plants and flowers. She's a banana tree in her yard. <laughs> she said to me one day, she goes, well, not many people can say they have a banana tree in their yard. I said, you're sure right about that. So anyway, um, or she said, most, pe most people in Indiana can't say they have a banana tree in their front yard. I said, you're sure about that's the truth right there or something. I can't, I said something like it just kind of cracked me up as she said that. Um, She's a master gardener now. I do think that some of the neighbors might think that her, she's got a lot. <laughs> she's got a lot going on in that front front walkway there. It's pretty. She's got a lot of different stuff. But it's a lot. Um. So anyway, I came back down to the end of the, the driveway to say something to her. I can't remember. It doesn't matter. I said something to her. And I said, um, so anyway, she said something else about books. And I said, well, what are some, 
how did we get talking about books? We, start, we started talking about books again, like thrillers. And I said, oh, I was going through my Audible. I found my, I said, oh my God, I forgot my phone. And so she said something. And then she said something about, oh, I got a book recommendation for you. So she, that's how it was. So she was going to tell me this book recommendation. So she told me, and then I said, well, these are the things I typically read. And I was going through my Audible and I was telling her and she hadn't heard of like any, I said some the Sherry Lapina book that just came out. I said, she wrote a couple next door and she just looked at me and she got real quiet and she goes, what I really like is <laughs> she's real cute. She goes, what I really like is cozy mysteries. And I go, what? And she goes, I love cozy mysteries. Do you know what those are? And I said, oh my God, I'm addicted to cozy mysteries. And so we got talking about cozy mysteries. I have to tell you, she is the first person, like, in person that I met that has ever uttered the word cozy mysteries. And, like, it just came out completely. She's like, I love cozy mysteries. So, we got talking, and she gave me several book recommendations. Okay, she gave me this one. I think the author's name is Maddie Day, and she has several series but I downloaded the first book on Audible. A lot of these authors that she gave me, they don't have Audible, so I'll have to buy like the paperbacks or the Kindle or whatever. But she has a series and it's called like the Country Store series or something. And it takes place in a fictional town in Southern Indiana that's based off of Brown County, which is like the store, the city I was just telling you guys about the other night, Nashville, or Nashville, Indiana. That's like this little small town with like bread and, back, bed and breakfasts. And my mom and I used to always go down there on like Halloween weekend and walk around and it's just like this cute little town. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so excited. A cozy mystery that takes place in Indiana. And then she loves the clam bake mysteries, which I think a lot of people have recommended me those. So, um, I think I might have bought, oh no, no, no. The first one on that, um, uh, is, was not on Audible. So I'm going to have to like buy the uh, paperback books of those. But she said that she loved those. The clam bake mysteries. And they take place in Maine. And then she gave me another one that's some, Kendall Odell, I think is the name of the character, she said. That, yes, because I looked it up, and it's the Kendall and Odell Mysteries. And they take place in Arizona. So she said, do you want me to make you a list of all of my favorites? I said, I would love that. She said, okay, that's what I'm going to do. I said, now, do you, where do you buy them? Or do you listen to them on Audible? Do you buy the paperback? She goes, I have a nook. She goes, I love my nook. <laughs> I said, well, my best friend listen, or reads everything on Kindle. She goes, I have a nook. I said, oh, no, I said, she said, first she said, uh, online. And I go, oh, like a Kindle? She goes, mm, I have a nook. <laughs> she got like real, it was real cute. So anyway, I think I might have won her over now, we, now that she knows that I love cozy mysteries. <laughs> But that was my day. And so then I went to the pool. Well, that wasn't my day. That was a good part of it, though. Because then I was supposed to get up to the pool in a half an hour. And it was like a total hour after I had talked to them and everything like that. So, and I was doing laundry and stuff, too. Which I just finished right now. Before I came out here, I just folded the last load of my laundry. Somebody said I should do that for a Peter Does Stuff video. I should have saved it. Well, I can always unfold it, I guess. <laughs> I'm not going to, though. But um, I like folding laundry. That's like one of my favorite things to do is fold laundry. But I don't do it like how everybody else does it. Like Alex always brings his up in a big basket and then he watches TV and he pairs socks and all that kind of stuff. I just stand in the basement and fold laundry. I think it's very therapeutic. <laughs> I don't know what it is just to stand down there in the silence and just fold laundry is very therapeutic. I don't know what y'all have imagined our basement to look like, but when you walk in, the first probably, well, to go left is where like the main part of the basement is, where all the boxes and stuff are. But if you go straight through the door, we have like this old fashioned desk that was my mom's that has like all of our laundry detergent and stuff on top of it. And then we have our washer and then we have like a big sink basin, you know, one of those big sink basins. And then we have our dryer and then we have, um, an ironing board, which has so much clothes piled up on top of it, we couldn't iron anything if we wanted to. And then we have a hanging rack, like for like hanging dry clothes, like you know, like a wooden hanging rack. And then we have um, 
like a metal hanging rack where you can like hang things on hangers. Ideally, once I get the basement clean, I would like to get a bunch of those hanging racks and have hanging clothes down there um, and winter coats. I have a couple winter coats on there right now. But anyway, um, so then I went to the pool and Alex was laying out and um, it wasn't super warm. It was like 77 when I got up there. It was okay. It was overcast, but I mean, I got in the pool. I was in the pool most of the time. And um, I did a little pictures for Instagram when I first got there of all of like my favorite beach things. And Alex and I took a cute little picture together. And um, like I said, there was his dad with his two sons up there. I don't know how old they are. Probably like eight or nine. And then the other one's probably I don't know, 11, 12, something like that. But anyway, it was funny because he was in the pool with them for a while. Like when I got there, probably like 15, 20 minutes. And he got out and the younger one was like, dad, get it back in the pool, dad, get back in the pool. And he was like, well, I'm trying to get a hold of your mom. And I remembered them from last summer. The mom looks like Kourtney Kardashian. And she comes up to the pool and she sits there on her phone the entire time and doesn't pay any attention to her kids. And she always just says, she's real cute. And she always wears like a little tennis skirt and she doesn't even have a bathing suit when she comes up to the pool. She sits in a lounge chair with her big sunglasses on. She's like, you guys play together, play together, be nice to each other, play together. So anyway, this dad was being so good to these his sons. And so then he got out and he called the mom and she didn't answer. So he was laying out in a lounge chair and it was so funny. I don't know why it cracked me up to see him just kind of like laying there sunning himself. And the younger one was like, dad, you promise you get back in, you promise you get back in. He goes, I just was in, I've been in the whole time that we've been here. And the older one's like, yeah, he said he would get back in in a second. And he goes, no, get back in now, dad, for 15 more minutes. And he goes, well, I'm just laying here right now. And he goes, this is kind of relaxing. <laughs> And I just started laughing. So anyway, um, the younger one was like, come on, dad, you didn't play, you didn't get in and play around with us and play with us enough or something like that. And I looked over at Alex. He said to me today, he goes, why are you always whispering at the pool? He's like, you think all these people can hear you? And I said, because voices carry and yes, they can. But I looked at him and I said, their mom, she looks like Kourtney Kardashian. I said, she don't ever get in the pool. And here they are hollering at their dad to get in the pool with them. I said, their mom doesn't, she never gets in the pool with them. <laughs> never. I've never seen her get in the pool with them. So anyway, but they're real good kids. They just like the two of them play back and forth together. And, you know, they don't really bother anybody or anything. But so then the dad said mom was on her way home. He said, I think we should be there when she gets there to meet her. And so they, they left. And that was at about... I was about 3 o'clock, 2.30, something like that. And then I was like, a, that was earlier because we didn't stay at the pool too late. I got there at like 1.30, so that was probably at like 2. Maybe, yeah, 2. And then this woman that I know, she doesn't live in our neighborhood, but her mom does. And she has a son that he's four. I just asked him today. I said, how old are you this year? He said, I'm four. And um, she is super cool. And I talked to her a lot last summer. She was there like every day that I was there. She and her mom. And um, so I talked to her like every day. And um, I had seen them earlier in the summer. It was real sweet. Um, because I got out, I was getting into my car to leave when they were like getting out of their car to come to the pool and I hadn't seen them yet this summer it was like the end of June or something and the mom said to the little boy she was like there's Peter do you remember him from last year and he was like hi Peter so today Alex and I were like talking to the mom and stuff and she was telling us that she had moved into a new house right before COVID and um all kinds of stuff. Anyway, she's super cool. So that was fun. We talked to them for a while. And then he 
was real tired. He got out of the pool and he just like laid on. She was sitting on the side of the pool and he laid on the side of the pool with his head in her lap. And then, and then he, she said, "Do you want me to get a towel for you?" And he said, "No." He said, "I just, um, I just want to lay on the side of the pool like this." <laughs> He was doing all these dives and all this kind of stuff. He'd been taking swimming lessons, she was telling me. Actually, at this place that um, I grew up going to, and I said, oh my God, he's such a better swimmer that in last year he could do dives and swim from side to side. He's four, okay? And uh, she's like, he just loves the water. She's like, he can do everything now. And I said, well, I said, when he's my age, he'll be coming down to the pool to do uh, handstands. And she was like, do you do that? And I said, oh, yeah, I come down here at night. And the grandma, who I know as well, she's real sweet. And she was like, you come down here and do handstands and stuff like that? And I said, yeah. She goes, you come to the pool at night? And I said, oh, yeah, I love it. I love to come down here and go night swimming. Where am I out on time? Oh, my God. 25 minutes already. So anyway, that was that. And then Alex and I were sitting there. I said, I'm kind of hungry. And I was actually thinking about coming back and eating the leftover pizza, but I didn't really want it. It didn't sound very good to me. And he was like, what do you want? And I said, I really want like a, I really want a salad, like a big salad. And, um, there used to be this place here in Indianapolis. We were all talking about it there after I mentioned it called Eddie Met Salad. And it was just like you go in and like they had like already like salads that you could order. They would like they made it for you. It's like Subway, but a salad place, right? And they had this ensalada there that I absolutely love that had corn and it had these tortilla chips in it for croutons. It was so good. And um, it sounds like it was like West Southwestern, but it wasn't Southwestern. Like it didn't taste like that. But it did have grilled chicken in it. I don't eat chicken, obviously. But so anyway, we're trying to figure out a place to get salads, and um, so we decided to do Maggiano's. But then Alex was like, "Well, I was supposed to get together with Melissa tonight, but Melissa has this fundraiser thing that she's been working on forever." And when I talked to her the other night, I kind of sensed that she was kind of like freaking out about getting all this stuff done for this fundraiser. So I, I texted her today and when I was at the pool and I said, hey babe, I said like, are you still wanting to get together tonight? I said, if you don't, because you're freaked out about stuff, like we can do it, you know, like next week or when I get back from Vegas, it's whatever, you know, like I don't want you to be stressed out about this stuff. And she was super apologetic and she was like, would you mind? She was like, I'm totally stressed about it. She had to take like 150 pictures of like uh, auction items or something like that. So she had taken all the pictures and she was like trying to like format them and whatever. I don't know. So I was just like, oh yeah, like, no, you do that. Don't worry about it. Um, so, so then Alex is like, so you're not going to go over to Melissa's? Because I thought originally he was going to come over there. And he was like, well, what am I going to do while you guys are just sitting there like talking about your podcast? And I was like, I don't know, just hang out. <laughs> and he was like, well, no, I'll probably do something. So then he goes, well, you're not going to go to Melissa's. And I said, no. And he said, well, do you want to do something? And I said, something like what? And he goes, I don't care. What do you want to do tonight? <clears throat> and so here's the thing. Okay, this will be funny because I think a lot of people will relate to this. Usually when we have that conversation, like Alex will say like, where do you want to go eat? And I'll say, oh, I don't care. Where do you want to go eat? And I'll say, and then he'll say like, okay, what about Cheesecake Factory? Oh, I don't really feel like Cheesecake Factory. Well, you said pick. I know, but not Cheesecake Factory. And then he'll say, okay, you pick. And I'll say, well, what about Chinese? God, I don't want Chinese tonight. And it just goes back and forth, right? So I'm trying to be a little bit more direct with all of that to like sidestep any having those conversations, right? Which we don't really even have those as much anymore. So anyway, he was like, well, what do you want to do? And I said, are you not going to go out tonight? And he was like, no, I'll just stay at home if you're going to be at home. And I said, okay. So, um, <laughs> I said, he goes, what do you want to do? And I sat there for a second and I said, to be honest with you, what I want to do? Cause at that point I had kind of decided like, I was either not going to make videos tomorrow or I was not going to make videos today. And I really wanted to make videos both days, but I was like, I just thought it would be good for me just to like take a day and just relax and you know. So, um, I said to him, cause I had really thought about like taking like a whole week off or a weekend off. But the thing is like, I was sitting here and I was thinking about like, if I do that, 
because people are always like, well, don't do videos when you're on vacation. It's almost easier to do vi videos when I'm on vacation because I don't do all six of them. And then whatever I do do, I just upload while I'm at the pool. So I like film in the morning. Okay, it stopped. Or Alex is relaxing in the room. And then, like, I just, you know, film a video or two real quick right then before we go to dinner or before I take a nap and everything. It's super easy, you know? And I enjoy doing it. So, like, it's my favorite thing. It was funny because I was watching this drag pageant and the person, it was 2003, Entertainer of the Year. And the woman or the, the person that won, Nina D'Angelo, said, um, the, her question for Q&A was, she was a makeup artist for MAC Cosmetics because it, she enjoyed that because it made other people happy. What do you do that makes you happy? And she talked about being able to be a full-time um, female impersonator five days a week and that that's like her favorite thing in the whole world and she feels blessed that she gets to do it as a full-time profession as well as like, you know, her passion. And I was like, you know, that's exactly how I feel about YouTube. You know, I just feel so blessed. Tanya left these Tic Tacs in here the other night and they have been rattling in my car since Tuesday night. These Coca-Cola Tic Tacs over there, which I'm not gonna eat because they have um, gelatin in them. But anyway, um, I feel like to take off like I just feel so blessed to be able to do what I do and I love to get up every day and do it that it's almost like a struggle for me not to. Like today, it was almost kind of a struggle for me not to film any videos. I had my videos planned out. I already knew. Well, my Peterisms, I know every day, you know? And my vlog, I had done, so that would have been two. And then my review video, I found a review I was gonna do at, Star at Starbucks. It was the Franken, Franken something. What's that, Franken, <laughs> you know that thing. Um, Frappuccino. And I even looked to see if they had any ingredients, which they did. And then my Peter Does Stuff video, I had a couple different ideas for what I was gonna do for that. And then um, for my drama video, I was gonna do some, I knew what I was gonna do. Um, and I had already looked it up and found two things for it and all this kind of stuff. So I was completely prepared to sit there, but then we were at the pool. I was just like, you know what? Like, I just, maybe I should just take a day and relax, you know? I think it's sometimes good for me to practice just being present and relaxing because I, I am almost kind of like <clears throat> physically and psychologically resistant to just being still sometimes. And um, like Tanya and I were talking in the pool the other day about doing nothing, just doing nothing, you know? And um, cause she was giving that advice to somebody else. And I was thinking, that's probably good advice for me to take. Um, because I'm not great at being still. So anyway, Alex said, he goes, what do you want to do tonight? And I said, well, I said, to be honest with you, like, I'm probably, I just want a low-key night at home. So like, if we get salads and whatever and watch TV, he's because he was like, we can sit on the patio or we can watch TV. And I said, okay. I said to get salads or something. And then I said, I think I might like to take a nap after that, you know, and then get up and watch a movie if you want. Or, you know, I said, baby, it's up to you. And if you end up wanting to go do something, I said, I don't really care. I don't really want to do anything tonight. I just want to be low-key tonight. Like, I just, I need a night to just relax. And he was like, okay. And then he was like, well, if we're both gonna be home and we're, you know, whatever, he's like, maybe we should go out to dinner somewhere. Like, should we go to like, and he started listing these places off. And I, I, I just looked at him and I said, you asked me what I wanted to do. And he was like, so you don't wanna go out to dinner? I said, no, I don't have any desire to like, take a shower and get dressed real nice to go look look cute and go out to dinner somewhere. I said, we're gonna be doing that every night when we go to Las Vegas. I said, I just want a day to just relax. And he was like, okay, babe. He was like, that's totally cool. So we ordered the salads with the idea, because well then what happened was I was like, well, if you wanna go somewhere, because he wanted to go to this livery in Noblesville. And I said, if you wanna go to livery, I'll go to livery. Cause I could, you know, dress kind of like casual, cool. It wasn't like get dressed up. I could wear like, you know, jean shorts and some kind of fun shirt or something like that. So anyway, I said, if you want to go to livery later, he goes, okay. And I said, well, like, 
he goes, you want me to get reservations? And I said, well, let's wait and see how we feel after the salads. So we decided that we were gonna get salads from Maggiano's. So we ordered these salads from Maggiano's with garlic bread. We had them and we watched The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Okay, I can't even get into that conversation right now about Real Housewives of Beverly Hills because Tanya and I afterwards got kind of into this heated conversation a little bit about Erica uh, Girardi and um, that whole situation. So I just feel like like, I can't get into that conversation. I don't know. Tiny's like, this is why we need to have a podcast about it so we can talk it out out loud. I said, okay. <laughs> so, Alex and I watched that. Then he was watching Watch What Happens Live. And I said, I'm going to call Tanya real quick. And he said, okay. And then I'm, he was upstairs when I came in. He had finished his show. And, um... What's that theme song? Now I got it stuck in my head, but I can't hear the words. Do you ever get a song stuck in your head, but you can't hear the words? Andy Cohen's got the 411. <laughs> oh my God, do you know that the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City is coming back in September? Apparently the trailer is out, and Jen Shaw is on it, and she gets arrested while they're filming it. And she's, Tanya told me that she supposedly thinks that Meredith was the one that tipped off the people to arrest her or something like that gonna be a good season. I love my uh, Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, I will say that. I, I sometimes don't love the Real Housewives anymore, but Beverly Hills I'm really into this season, and um, I don't even think, I, I watched Atlanta last season kind of like off and on, and Salt Lake City I really like, so I'll watch that whole season. So anyway, I came upstairs, and Alex was like in bed, and he was just kind of like hanging out and whatever, and he was like, what are you gonna do now, babe? And I said, I think I'm gonna take a nap. And I said, are you going to want to get a livery later? And uh, I said, because I'm kind of full. Oh, he had said he was really full. And I said, you're not going to want to get a livery later, are you? And I said, and he said, no, I don't think. He goes, I don't think so. We can see. He goes, if you want to. I said, babe, I am so full. I said, all I want to do is lay down and then just watch a movie or something like that. And he said, okay. And then he was like, how late are you going to lay down? And I said, I don't know. And then his friend called them to, sh to tell him that she was going to the Italian Fest. And then I think he felt bad because he said he would stay at home with me. I was like, and he just kind of looked at me. And I was like, what, babe? And he was like, would you care if I went to the Italian Fest? And I was like, honey, go. I said, I do not care. I said, I'm going to nap and sleep and get up and watch something and just relax. I said, we can watch a movie together, or if you want to go to the Italian Fest, you can go to the Italian Fest. I said, it's no big deal. I said, I really have no attachment to it whatsoever. I think he just felt real bad, you know, like we had kind of talked about doing something. I said, we're going to do something tomorrow and tomorrow night anyway, because we get a brunch on Sundays, and then I'll probably film some videos, and then we'll hang out the rest of the day. Or we might go to the pool tomorrow, depending on you know, if it's nice. We'll see. Um, so he was like, are you sure? And I said, yes, babe, I'm sure. Go. Have fun. So, he went to the Italian Fest in Fountain Square. They got down there kind of late. And then they went somewhere else. And now they're at... They went to this bar downtown because it's their friend's birthday. That should be closing, like, any second. Or he may even be on his way home already. I don't know. So, anyway... And I did not call anybody to try to do anything. It was so nice. I slept until about, oh, it's caught like 9.45, 10. And then I got up and I was kind of hungry and I regret it. I got uh, out my rest of my pizza from yesterday and my stomach kind of hurts now from it. But I was like, I was really hoping that this drag pageant would be that's being released tomorrow, this year, 2021. I was really hoping that it would be out already, but it wasn't. So instead, I went back and I watched 2003, which was when Nina D'Angelo won, and it's one of my favorite. It's when I talked about it on here and I downloaded the song from that musical, Aida. My Strongest Suit, that song. It's like one of my favorite drag pageant talents I've ever seen, ever. 
And it was crazy, like, watching it. And you could see all the people, like, in the audience, like, standing up and cheering and stuff. And I was, like, at that pageant. I had, like, a table. It was me and my ex and our friend, Scotty. Well, you know, I've talked about Scotty on here. It was the three of us at this table. And it was, like, on the second tier up. Because they used to have it at the Connection. So that was fun. And I watched that. And Tucker hang, uh, hung out with me. And Boo Radley hung out down at his house. Well, they slept with me while I took a nap. But... Then Boo Radley went down to his house. I think it's cooler down there. He likes it down in there. Yeah, and that was that. Somebody else I was going to tell you. Oh, tonight we, like, talked a bunch, too, about, like, trying to plan stuff for Vegas. I don't think we're really going to do stuff. We might, like, plan, like, one show. And... We need to start planning some dinners. If you guys have suggestions for dinner places in Las Vegas, let us know. Um, like maybe like romantic dinner places too. I can tell you the places that we like. We like Javier's. I think it's in the Aria. Um, but I, th but I don't know that I want to go there. I think we did that for our anniversary the last time we were there. I think that's where we went because Melissa and Jason suggested it. It's okay. Um, I like it a lot, but. I want to try some new places. I don't love SDK. I've done SDK. It's not... I, it's okay. Everybody talks about it like it's the greatest thing in the entire world. Um, I, I am not a steak eater either, you know? So... It's a cool concept. They have a DJ in there and everything like that. It's very like... It's like club meets restaurant. It's a cool concept. In Miami, SDK... If there's only one, I don't know if there's two or not, but it's right next to the one hotel where we've been staying. And there's always a line outside, like a mile long, to get in. And in Las Vegas, it's in the Cosmopolitan. And the very first time that we ever went was actually the day after we got married. And our friends that were there that were, uh, like, guests of our wedding. They, he proposed to her. This is kind of a funny story, actually. I mean, not a funny story, but kind of a cool story. He proposed to her in front of the fountains of the Bellagio. And then we were in their wedding a year later. We read in their wedding. And, um, we need to have brunch with them. We haven't seen them in a while. They travel so much. They do, like, Iron Mans, and they do marathons and all kinds of stuff like that. They do them like in uh, like Argentina or Chile and stuff like that. Is the battery dying already? Are you kidding me? Um, and Paris and Germany and all over the place. Thailand. They do these like extensive like marathons and other places of the world. But anyway. So the couple that like filmed it was out there too and they weren't in our wedding and we like had met him like once or twice and we had never met her the girlfriend and um this guy's like mover shaker <laughs> in indianapolis and probably 10 years older than me and no oh, no probably I bet he is, he's 12 or 15 years older than me, and, um, no, oh yeah, he's gotta be, because he's got kids my age, so he's gotta be older than that, he still looks really good for his age, so anyway, and his girlfriend is Alex's age, um, well, she's not his girlfriend anymore, so anyway, they were together for a while, they were engaged and everything. So we went to go, like we ran into them as we were um, coming back from the pool and at the Cosmopolitan and they were staying there too. They were staying there in another place because they were such big gamblers that they were given like uh, a, a suite there and a suite somewhere else. And so this guy, oh, I guess maybe Alex had met him a couple times at like Pacer games and stuff like that. He's really a nice guy. And so we were like standing there at this blackjack table. It was like him and just this dealer. And um, the guy goes, 
this guy goes said to Alex, we were all standing there. It was like all three couples were standing there watching this guy play um, play blackjack. And he said, Alex, are you any good at blackjack? And Alex is like, no, I have no idea anything about blackjack. He goes, okay, good. He goes, because he goes, I like. Uh, he goes, I like people that are new that don't know anything. He goes, you're gonna be, you're gonna, you're gonna tell me what to bet. And Alex is like, no, I'm not gonna do that. And he goes, yeah. He goes, um, I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna, I'm gonna, um, you're gonna tell me, you're gonna tell him what to bet, or something like that. I wish Alex was here to tell the story because it was something. He said something funny like, and if I win, I'll let you keep the chip. And Alex thought like it was like you know, like a 50 or a hundred dollar chip. It was a $10,000 chip. And he was, and he had like stacked up. <laughs> I mean, he loves to gamble. So anyway, uh, we played like, we sat there while he played like two or three hands and then we left. But he was like, he was like, hey, I want to take you guys all to um, STK out for dinner tonight to celebrate the engagement and celebrate your wedding and stuff like that. Hold on just a second. Okay, I'm back. So anyway, he was like, I want to take you guys both, both couples, um, out to SDK tonight because we have dinner plans there. They were going to see Tim McGraw. They're huge country music fans. They were going to see Tim McGraw and Faith Hill and they had a personal meet and greet. I don't know how they arranged that, but he was like, we're going to meet Tim McGraw and Faith Hill. This guy is like huge money. But anyway, and then he was like, and then we're going to go to dinner at STK. And he was like, I'll just call and make it for six instead of for two. Do you guys want to go? And Alex was like, yes. <laughs> and I was like, well. And Alex is like, you always are just so hesitant about that stuff. I just am like weird about like, you know, I just, am, I don't know. I, I don't like to be prideful, you know, but like my dad, I guess, was always very humble. And, you know, if, if. Kind of like if you couldn't pay your way kind of thing, then don't go. And um, and he, and so he was like, he was he looked at me, he goes, just let me do it for your wedding. And I said, sure, okay. So we ended up going, and I will never forget. <laughs> well, she's stunning anyway, and she's still a friend of mine to this day. Well, we still talked to both of them, um, but she she moved away. But she's still she's beautiful absolutely beautiful and just very like not tons of makeup blonde shoulder length hair she's super tall she's like 5'11 and she came in and she had a short sleeve cashmere white turtleneck sweater on with a pair of jeans and black cowboy boots I was in love immediately <laughs> let me just tell you okay I was like oh my god she looks so good and so she and I sat down there and talked and she was from Kentucky and she was from, was it Kentucky or Tennessee? I can't remember. She was, she was telling me all these stories about where she was. She was from right where Larry Flint from Hustler Magazine was from. She, anyway, she's had all these cool stories and I just sat there the whole night and talked to her. We had such a blast, but it was so loud in that place you could hardly hear. We sat in this like white vinyl leather booth or something. I don't know what it was, but anyway, um, it was like a, you know, half shell booth kind of thing. It was really fun. That, that 11 days of our vacation in Vegas in marriage or wedding and honeymoon was just unbelievable. And then Alex's friend, so Alex has a friend that lives in Vegas and he took us to a restaurant called Dragonfly. And it was like a local little restaurant. I don't even know where it was. It was like a tapas restaurant. It was so cool inside. It was so beautiful. And this is a, a friend of Alex's from college. Last time we were there, we had him, he took us out to some like bars and clubs. Because I really wanted to go last time out. Isn't that funny? I wanted to go. Can you believe it? But not to the clubs. I don't like going to the big clubs. But like the little like dive, gay dive bars and stuff like that. I like doing that. I think that's fun. Like we went to like, I think it was called Garage Bar. And then we went to Piranha, which is where he always takes us. And I can't remember the other place that we went. Maybe that was just those two. No, I feel like there was one other place. No, that was Piranha. Anyway, 
it was fun. And maybe that was what was so fun about it was we just didn't have anything planned. And I feel like every trip since then we've always planned stuff. Like the last time that we went, we had so many shows planned. And I remember by like the fourth show, like I looked at Alex and I said, I'm never doing this again. And I'm the one that books the shows. I'm the one that loves the shows, you know? I mean, he does too, but like I'm the one that books them. And he was like, what? And I said, I'm never again gonna like book like four shows on a seven day trip. Like this is ridiculous. We saw Opium. We saw Zumanity again, I think. I don't remember. Well, I vlogged it, so I probably could just look it up. We saw La Rev, which people always think is a Cirque show, but it's not a Cirque show. What's the fourth show that we saw? I mean, and that's the other thing is we see the same shows over and over and over again. Like, I was looking right now, and the only three Cirque shows that are playing are Mystere. I've already seen it. I have no desire to see it again. I didn't enjoy it when I saw it. That's, like, the only Cirque show I didn't really like. And then O, which I would go see O again, but Alex really could care a lot. He's like, I never really liked that one. I was like, really? Um, and the Michael Jackson one. And then... Absinthe is playing. I did. I thought this was interesting, though. I mean, not interesting because they have it's a mask mandate in, in Vegas right now. But um, like all the shows and stuff, you have to wear masks at. It has all the things on there and inside the, all the hotels and the restaurants and places like that. I was talking to this woman today at the pool. This this woman's mother and she had just gotten back from Florida. She was in like Clearwater area, I think she said. Oh, Tampa, St. Pete kind of area she said and she said it was like mask mandate when she was down there too. went to Miami when was it it was when we stayed half and half that trip so I don't remember when that was but this guy that we were talking to on the plane he like for his company he, here he designs those masks or some masks and he was like true story this will be like the most comfortable mask you ever wear and I'm like yeah whatever and he was like, no, here was like, let me give you one. And I said, okay. And so he gave me this mask, this white mask. It was hands down the most comfortable mask. I, it was this like white cotton mask. It was so comfortable. I wish that I knew like how to get a hold of him or where those masks are from because those masks are fantastic. <laughs> I have all kinds of masks at home and stuff. I have a bunch of here. Why is this guy bending over backwards to look and see me? He is like this. Going like this at me. Don't, eyes on your own page, dude. Eyes on your own page. Now he's going like 90 miles an hour. This car just turned around. I was like, is that a police officer turning around to get him because he's going so fast, but it's not. A lot of weird stuff going on tonight. I really would like to finish the Truly Devious book tonight, but I don't think that that's gonna happen. Um, I think I still have like two and a half hours left of it. I haven't really been listening to it, but it's fantastic. But I'd like to finish that tonight and then I would like to start this cozy mystery that she recommended to me that takes place in Southern Indiana. And then when I get done with that, I'm either going to listen to the Kristen Hanna book, Firefly Lane, or I'm going to listen to Nine Perfect Strangers, one or the other. Um, I try to get one of them done this week. 
so I have to, I'm like to keep my goal going I have to read two books a week so if I finish Truly Devious that will be my that would serve as like my second book for this week so whatever book next I read is like my first book for next week so I can read some longer but I can listen to some longer books now because um, I have the time to read them and I have you know like I have more days but I have to be kind of committed to listening you know listening to them I have been listening to, and like today I was reading that recovery book a lot, but I've been listening to a lot of Whitney Houston lately. I don't know what that's about. Now, you know when I go to Vegas, I'm still gonna do my vlogs. You know how that works, right? So I'll still do the vlogs. And I don't know what I'm gonna do for my review videos because every time I've gone on vacation before, I've just gone from like Starbucks to Starbucks to Starbucks to review stuff, but I can't do that right now. I mean, they just don't have enough stuff. Yeah, I mean, I don't ever know which place is gonna have what. So I can't really do that. Tomorrow I'm gonna do a Starbucks review. I need to sit down and kind of like schedule it out. Even if I did like maybe a review, I mean, we're gonna be gone for a while. So maybe if I did a review like every other day. I don't like wanna do reviews while I'm there though. Because that is one thing that like, like if we were just gonna be hanging out in the hotel room all the time, that'd be fine. But like that is one thing that, um, like it takes more work, you know? I mean, I might do stuff like order room service one day and do like a review of room service or something, you know? I don't know. Do you guys have suggestions for reviews that I can do in Las Vegas? I do need recommendations for romantic dinner places, though. I guess Alex's mom is not going to be out there as long as she thought she was going to be or something like that. That we're going to be there at the same time, but like she's not going to be out there as long or something. I don't know what happened. We were talking about it today. So, but I'm sure he'll want to go out with Maya one night somewhere. <laughs> to be honest... I am just excited about laying out by the pool, taking a nap, <laughs> watching TV shows and movies, having romantic time, and eating some good meals. That is what I am excited about for a week. And just to spend uninterrupted time with my husband, that's what I'm excited about. We're gonna have fun. Like every other trip, I wish I was a good 40 or 60 pounds thinner than I am right now, but there's not a whole lot we can do about that in a you know, short period of time. So we're just gonna have to let that one go for right now. <laughs> and just enjoy it as it is, right? That's, that's what we're gonna do, ladies and gentlemen. I actually don't know how much of my book I have left to listen to. It's so weird that like even after everything opened up again, I feel like people don't really go out and do stuff as much as they did anymore. I think people started to realize how much they like just being at home and they like their homes, you know? Because, um, like, when I drive around on Friday and Saturday nights, like, there's hardly ever anybody, like, out on the roads. I mean, not like how it used to be. 
you know, maybe downtown or Broderpool is different. I do drive by or drive through Broderpool every once in a while when I vlog. That's like college bars and stuff like that. Oh my God, you guys. Did you watch, I don't know how I got sucked. Oh, I do know how I got sucked into it. Justin Anderson, the hairstylist, he had it on his Instagram story. So I started watching him. Do you guys know about, okay, so it's Sorority Rush um, at colleges right now. And at Alabama, University of Alabama, I guess like Rush is like such a huge thing there. That they had, like these different schools were having the girls that were rushing do like outfits of the day for Rush on TikTok. It's hilarious, okay? I mean, they're dead serious about it. And, um, like, unless you have been around people that, like, are really into the Greek systems, like, I don't think you really can understand, like, how serious they take it. Like, having grown up with a pie fi as a mother, like, I was, like, sitting there when they were saying things, and I, like, knew stuff they were talking about and whatever about the arrow and all this kind of stuff, because they were, like, the arrow, arrow by pi fi and all this kind of stuff. And I was, like, oh, my God, my mother would eat this up. But it was kind of funny because it was, like, like, I remember my mom telling me a lot of stuff that they did uh, when they uh, rushed, but it was, like, a different today than it was then. I almost called Susie because I wanted to send her some of these TikToks, but I didn't know if she would know how to watch these TikToks for the Pi Fi house because there's this one Pi Fi house they're like shaking their heads back and forth. But anyway, you know I grew up on all of that. Pi Fi misses, Pi Fi kisses, sweetest of them all. You can have your Chi Omegas. <laughs> Pi Fi, a Pi Fi, a Pi, a Beta Fi. I'll be a Pi Fi all my life until the day I die. I wouldn't be a Kappa, nope, DG or Alpha Chi. Be a Pi Fi, a Pi Fi, a Pi, a Beta Fi. And my dad was a Fiji. We are the, we are the marching, we are the marching, marching Fiji men. That was their song. It's so funny because my dad, like, like, now that he's, like, you know, older and whatever, he doesn't take a ton of that stuff seriously anymore, even though my dad was the president of the Fiji house at IU. And, um, but, like, like not too long ago, I can't remember how long ago it was, but not too long ago, I asked my dad about, like, the secrets of, like, the Fiji, like, the secret handshake. He wouldn't tell me what it was. I was like, you won't tell me? He was like, oh, no, absolutely not. And he was real serious about it. And, like, any other time that we talk about stuff like that, like, he's never serious about it. He's like, oh, that was college. That was college, you know, whatever. And I said, you won't tell me what the secret handshake is for the Fijis? He was like, no. He was like, I I swore I would never tell. And I, you don't you do not do that. Like, he was real serious about it. I was like, I, it's like my mom, when she was, like, on her deathbed, and we're having this last conversation, and I said... There's this thing called the Misties of the Pi Fies, which are like things you never tell, right? And I said, what are the, can you tell me some of the Misties of the Pi Fies? And she sat up and she goes, I can't. And I'm like, to this day, it's like my parents, it's like, I don't know, like the two things they held true to were being in a fraternity and a sorority and it cracks me up. But anyway, then there was drama that occurred with this poor, this one poor young lady because she was like, everybody was rooting for her, okay, and to get into the house of her choice. Well, then there was some drama. I won't tell you what it is. I'm thinking about it, <laughs> seeing if it shows up in some drama videos. But there was some, she got dropped by all these houses. So anyway, but then she said she was okay. Apparently she went on a live stream and said she was okay. <laughs> Justin Anderson was following the whole thing, so then he got me to follow the whole thing. That's where I need to stay off my phone because I feel like I live vicariously through these people. <laughs> Go pie pies. <laughs> oh my gosh, that hurt my arm. <laughs> my mom would be so proud. That's not a pie fight chair or anything. I just totally made that up. <laughs> Don't go do that because then people think you're s that you're silly because it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> oh my God, that hurt so bad. <laughs> Did you ever hit your funny bone? I think that's what happened. Mm. Do you remember that game Operation? When you did, like it would say funny bone and you had to pull it out. You know, <laughs> we always just wanted to get zapped. <laughs> 
we didn't really want to play the game. Oh my gosh. I can't believe this battery isn't on the halfway mark already. <laughs> These people, they got places to go. Look at that. You better go. So today was a good day. Today was a really good day. And I started and finished this entire drag pageant tonight. It didn't feel real long. Well, I fast forwarded through some of it because I kind of remembered some of it. It's weird though because you'll see these people that make top 10. And, like, I remember their names. And I remember them, like, performing. Like, there was this drag queen at the Connection. Her name was Shantae. Or, uh... Did she pronounce it Shantae? Yeah, Shantae. And she had competed in National Entertainer of the Year, like, six years in a row. And the, that year that I watched tonight was her first year. And I remember being at... I mean, because I was at that pageant. That was her first year that she made it to top ten. And like she stopped performing, or she stopped performing at the connection after that. I don't remember what happened to her. And then, but I remember like talking to her. Like my ex knew her, and we would like, and he knew Asia. And I wonder what happened to Asia too. I can remember standing there while he would like, because he had been going to the connection since he was eighteen. Because back in the day, you could go if you had somebody sponsor you, which meant that they were twenty one and they would make sure that you didn't like drink while you were there. So. He had been going since he was like 18 years old with this other friend of his. And um, their mom, like this other kid's mom would go out with them and she would like dance and stuff. And um, she was really supportive of him. And anyway, that was kind of a, a cool story. But so my ex knew a, a lot of the people that worked at The Connection. It was funny because I was watching these two guys that were dancers, and they were dancers in Asia's routine, and they were dancers in Shantae's... I feel like it's Shanti, but I think it was Shantae's routine. And, um... Both of, they danced in both of her routines. And I was like, I remember them, and they danced when... Like, they were on the cast of The Connections, La Boya, La Femme, which was the drag show there. And then they would, like, come out on the dance floor and dance. And people thought they were, like, the best dancers in the entire world. And one of them was real cute and the other one was not. But um, it was kind of sad watching it tonight. It reminded me of, like, back in the day, the Connection Bar Complex was such a huge thing in Louisville, Kentucky. And um, it sat on the corner of the street... And there had been a restaurant in there at one point. But when you walked in, there was like this old wooden bar. And there was an upstairs over it. And then they had these bathrooms right there. And then there was coat check and it was where you paid. And there was always a long line to get in. Always a long line to get in. And all the way out the door. And um, there was like these mirrors down this hallway. At one point, they built... Um, like a stripper room and they had like these strippers and these like shower room shower things and stuff but that was later that was like when Alex and I were together and we would go down there sometimes when we first got together they had that um, and then if you go through and turn left there's the bathrooms and then there was the dance floor which was huge and it was this huge dance floor and then they had this where you could like walk up around like two thirds of it or uh, two fourths of it, <laughs> two fourths of it, half of it. You could walk like up this way and up this way. And this way there were like couches and lounge chairs and or like couches and little chairs. And there was a, a huge bar up there and they had cages where you could dance in these cages and stuff. And they had um, platforms that you could dance, boxes that you could dance on and stuff like that. Alex, of course, always loved to dance on boxes. And then if you walk through there, into the next part, they had um, a bar. This huge, long bar. Like, huge. When I first started going there, that part was actually outside. Because it. then you walk from there past this 
uh, staircase that goes up to the drag queen's dressing rooms. And then you go into these double doors that open into this huge theater that had this huge bar all the way down one row till you hit the bathrooms. Upstairs, I mean, it was like theater, theater. With a huge stage, and it went down, down, down. Tables, everything. It was fantastic. And um, it was huge. And, you know, I can remember, like, we would just stand outside in the street um, after the connection closed. I feel like it closed at, like, 4. We would go to after-hour stuff. We would drive back. We would eat at this place called Memphis Diner that had 24 hour breakfast buffet and it was literally like $2.99 it was like all the sausage and biscuits you could eat and uh, I had like that uh, hash stuff I love uh, come on now corned beef hash you know don't go out of focus don't go out of focus please hold on okay when that happens it's just easier to turn it off and start it on again but anyway we would sit there and eat breakfast and then we would go home and we would drop off our two friends, our two girlfriends and Seymour, or we would drop off Scotty and then we would, or whoever else we had taken out and we would go back to our hotel or when we, he had an apartment there to the, uh, his apartment and we would crash out. It was fun. Those were fun nights. See, we never worked on Mondays when we were together because our, both of our schedules were Tuesday through Saturday. So... We would stay on Sunday nights, too. So, Sundays, we would just get up and um, go to, like, the Seymour City Pool in the summer. Go out to eat the Cracker Barrel or the, uh, what was the Tex-Mex place called? Shoot, I can't even remember. Or the TA, and we would play video games or the Waffle House. We'd always buy a candle. At, oh, we would go to like swap meets and stuff like that. We would always buy candles though at um, Cracker Barrel. We'd always get every time we came home, we would buy one kind of. We always bought like baked scents. We liked those. There used to be these candles. I can't remember what they were called, but they came in like little like like mug. They're clear glass mug jars, and they sold them all the time at like little farm like the farmers markets and carnivals and stuff like that for a while here they sold them at the gas station but we used to have a bunch of those too Alex and I went down to the connection for a long time not for a long time but first couple years that we were together we would go down there probably every month or two we would drive down there Sad to think they're closed now. I wonder what they did with that huge area. It's weird too because I read this. Um, shoot, what's the book called? I can't even think of her name now. That author. Do you hear that thing rattling over there? She's the one that writes the huge books, but they look like poetry, but it's not poetry. We interviewed her. Elaine, I want to say it's like Elaine something, but that's not her name. She wrote a book about her daughter. It's like the first one's about her daughter. It's like, um, it's like about Chris, it's like crystal meth. It's like meth, dry, and something else. What's her name? God, I love her stuff. I've read tons of her stuff. But anyway, she wrote this one book about these kids that were all runaways. Like, one ran away. It was a girl from, like, a religious house home. Like, a house... Her parents were real religious. And this other guy, he came out in southern Indiana. And... Why can't I think of her name? I feel, I feel it starts with an E. Elaine? I feel like it's Elaine, but that's not right. Harper? Um, I can't remember what this book is called. But anyway, there's two books in the series. And then the gay, the gay character, 
he came out to his dad and his dad kicked him out. So he ended up going out to this bar in Louisville. And when I read the book, I knew she was talking about the connection. You could just tell that that was the bar that she was talking about. And then they all end up in Las Vegas and they all end up becoming prostitutes on some uh, trick, uh, tricks is what it's called. Tricks, who's that by? Well, I can't remember what that, what is her name? I can't remember what the second one is called, though. I was thinking about this the other day because I haven't read one of her books in a while, and one of her books I haven't read is called Perfect. And I feel like it's... She also... I think it's the book she wrote about twins. She writes about all kinds of issues. She writes about... And she's real blatant about it, too. Like, it's... Like... There are such great books because she doesn't shy away from scary subjects. I'm going to pull in here and look and see what her name is in just a second. I know somebody's yelling it at the screen right now. I feel like it's Elaine, but what I'm kind of wondering is if her last name isn't something like Harris, because I'm thinking of Charlene Harris, the author that wrote the true, the Sookie Stackhouse novels, because I was talking about her today to the woman across the street. So maybe her last name is something like Harris. I don't know. I'm going to find out in a second, but I... Uh, I, thought, I need to read another one of her books. I wonder if she's put, she puts, I looked and she had something else recently, but it was like not fiction. It's not Emily, Elaine, it's not Elaine. Her first name is something that you wouldn't guess. But anyway, the way that she started writing all these books is because her daughter got sober. I think her daughter actually ended up going back out or something like that on methamphetamines. And so she wrote these fictional books basically based on that experience. And they're fantastically done. There's three of them. It's like glass, meth, and dry or something like that. I can't remember. up and see what this is. I was into my Whitney Houston listening to that. My eye is starting to dry up. Here it goes. I can't see who the author is on here because of the Ellen Hopkins. It was an e-name. I can't see it because you can't read it because it's like this. <laughs> That's why I couldn't see her name because her name, hold on a second, I'll show you, was like that. Can you see? I couldn't see it. It was all like red. Anyway, Ellen Hopkins. She's great. I love her. vlogging for a while now, so. Oh, let's look and see how much of my audiobook I have left to listen to. Well, you can't really tell. I have four hours and 51 minutes left. So basically, I have... Hold on. I have two, exactly two hours left. Yeah, I'm not going to probably finish it tonight because I'll be, you know, going to bed at like 6 a.m. But anyway, I am going to get off here now, though, so I can listen to some of it. We'll at least finish it by tomorrow, then. Look at my funny hair. I feel like I got a little bit of sun today, though, even though I was, like, in the clouds the whole day. So, I'm going to get off here now. 
Um, if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. I hope that you guys were having a magically amazing Sunday and I love you guys and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya. Oh, and for anyone, 3D, <laughs> look at that. It does look like 3D, doesn't it? For anyone out there that needs to hear it, one more I love you. I love you guys and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya.